I used to go to yard sales on Saturdays, early. Used to take my daughter, Sam. Alas, the moment puberty threatened, it was suddenly dumb, and Kelly got tired of playing referee between Sam and me. So Kelly started making a big breakfast for Sam and whatever kid inevitably spent the night on Friday, and she'd let me go out on my own with only a little guilt tripping. One fall morning, kinda chilly out, I was hitting up some sales south of the city, back in my old stomping ground. I figured I'd swing by my mom's place after, maybe bring her coffee and some munchkins from the Dunkin' they'd just opened. Yeah, that didn't happen. Not once I spotted the magic eight ball. I hadn't seen that thing in, Jesus, thirty years. But the moment my eyes passed over it, I knew what it was, whose it was. The remains of a strawberry shortcake sticker still clung to the sides, jagged as if pulled off roughly or in a hurry. Might as well have been stamped, Property of Henna Fetzel. How much? I asked the lady working the sale, trying to sound casual. She shrugged. How about a buck? Sold, I said with maybe too much fervor. Only then did I think to look up at the house. Even years later, I held a loose picture of Henna's place in my head. This wasn't it. The lady running the sale was too young to be her mom anyway, and Henna was an only child, so it wasn't a sister. Uh, where'd you get it? I asked, peeling off a single from a small fold of them in the pocket of my slacks. The lady took the dollar and stuffed it into a Home Depot apron. She said, Probably bought it at another yard sale. Never had much use for it. You gonna grab it now, or are you still looking? I reached for the thing, but it was like the memories of that night, thirty years earlier, came clearer the closer my hand got to the toy. It wasn't fear, but like a warbling in my reality, almost dreamlike. Can you bag it for me? I asked. She laughed at me a little, but bagged it anyway. I drove straight home. No more yard sales that morning. I usually ventured out a 15 or 20 minute drive away just so I wasn't hitting the same sales every week. But I swear the drive home that day dilated somehow. I would play this trick sometimes back when I was at the law firm, during any of the multitude of boring meetings. I tried to remember something that wasn't already a memory. Try it sometime. It's hard. Bring something to mind that you haven't thought of in years since it happened. Really see it in your mind. Tough, right? We usually carry only snapshots of events, and even those dwindle eventually. Whatever sparse occasions I'd visited henna definitely fell into this category. Forgettable, or at least truncated. But on that drive, with that magic eight ball sitting in the passenger seat like an old friend wanting to catch up after all that time apart, the night I first saw the eight ball at henna's might have happened hours ago. That's how clear an image formed in my head. I was a big kid. Not fat, I guess, but chubby. Back when I was 12, that meant wearing acid-washed jeans, nice and baggy, maybe a Baja or a leather jacket to cover the gut and the sweat stains under my arms. An awkward time, especially since my diminished physical confidence certainly didn't mean I was any less attracted to girls. Quite the contrary. I'd had my eye on Carrie Thompson since the third grade, and at Henna's party that night, maybe an empty Coke bottle would manifest? Maybe a walk-in closet for seven minutes in heaven? Dealer's choice. And thank Christ for me being next-door neighbors with Jeff Fillers, probably the real reason I'd been invited. But what was I doing at the party? Hanging out upstairs, listening to all of them chatting and laughing down there, Obsessed with the dark stains under my arms, pulling in my stomach and trying out different hairstyles in the bathroom mirror. Finally, I worked up the courage to actually join my friends, or people I wanted to be my friends. But when I left the bathroom, I saw this odd purple glow from one of the rooms. Henna's parents were gone, 
some trip, so it wasn't them. I crept over. The door was ajar, and I pushed it in to find what was clearly Henna's room. School stuff on the walls, trinkets, blah, blah, blah. All the stuff my daughter now has gracing her no-dads-allowed room at my place. The glow was from a black light, ultraviolet. That was popular back then, and she had a couple of posters highlighted in the purple haze, as was the top of the eight ball. I'd seen him before, sure. Any kid who ever set foot in a Spencer's Gifts knew about the eight ball, as much a staple as the plasma globe or the fake poop. I knew they reacted to black light, so I picked it up, gave it a shake, and asked it the only thing on my mind. Am I going to kiss Carrie Thompson tonight? Ask again later. <laughs> so much for that. Maybe it was the black light or the heady, saccharine smell of Henna's room, incense or perfume. I felt dizzy, like I needed to sit. So I did, on Henna's bed. I remember spotting a pair of her underwear on the floor and feeling funny, like, I don't know, like if anyone caught me in there, I'd be in trouble, real trouble, instant pariah status. Is anyone going to find me here? My sources say no. Why that comforted me, I couldn't tell you, but it did. But come on, this was just a toy. Silly, really. I looked down at my clothes. Am I wearing jeans? As I see it, yes. <sighs> Hell, half the answers came up yes, so it was just luck. I asked the same thing again. Yes. Again? Yes, definitely. A small buzz began in my stomach, the same sort that every young boy feels at some point when he thumbs through a nudie mag for the first time or discovers a five-dollar bill in a crowd of people and no one sees him pick it up. I asked again, but this time the little pyramid teetered on the edge, with none of the replies coming up in the small viewing window. It happened, so I shook it, asked again, but still it teetered. No answer. And I swear I could feel an impatience, an uneasiness to it. I decided to change tack. Do you belong to Henna Fetzel? Don't count on it. Aha! A rational response. Clearly it was Henna's toy. My mystery buzz began to taper off. Are we in Henna Fetzel's room? Yes. Did my mom drive me here? Yes. Have I ever cheated on the weekly math quiz? It is decidedly so. But you don't belong to Henna Fetzel? My reply is no. Do I live on Skyline Drive? Is my dog's name EJ? Is my favorite color blue? Yes. 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 Too much to be coincidence by now. Time for something important. Is Jeff the only reason I was invited to the party? Most likely. Okay. Do any of these kids even like me? Without a doubt. Will they know I'm all sweaty? Yes. Will they care? Very doubtful. Do they want me down there? It is certain. You told me to ask again. If I go down there now, will I kiss Carrie Thompson? Outlook, good. That was all I needed. I went downstairs, sweat stains, paunch and all, and I had fun with my friends. You know, I didn't kiss Carrie Thompson that night, but I talked to her, and we went to Deano's Pizza the next week, and the week after that, I did kiss her. Things were different, and near as I could tell, it was because of that eight ball. But I didn't want it, didn't really even want to see it again. I was good. Things were good. I remember in pre-law, I took statistics. One day, we came into class to find a penny on each desk. At the start of class, the professor had us all stand up, big class, and told us all to flip the coin. We did. Then he said, if you got tails, sit down. A bunch of people sat. Flip again, and if you get tails, sit. 
Again, more people. Third time, same thing. But not me. I'd flipped three heads. Fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh time, all heads. I look around, and just a few people were left standing. Eight, nine, just me. Nine heads, last man standing. The prof said, Now, what are the odds that this young man is going to flip heads again? Some hands went up. Keep in mind, he's already come up heads nine times. More hands. He calls on a few people, gets guesses of one in a hundred, a thousand. No, he tells us. The odds are 50-50. Still, always. At the time, I thought back to that eight ball, and that's when I knew it had been bullshit. Coincidence. Luck. I just needed a push, and that was what fate had given me. But after finding it again at that yard sale, feeling its presence again, I wasn't so sure. Back at the house, I took it inside, past my family still eating breakfast, confused as to why I was home already. Took it up to my office, locked the door, heart banging like I just finished my morning run. I looked around for some inspiration and found a folder for a legal case I'd been working on. Is this a capital murder case? Yes. Is the victim a woman? Yes. Is the accused a woman? My sources say no. Was there a murder weapon? My reply is no. My whole body tingled. It was real. I could feel it. God, the things I could do with that ball. Never boot the wrong juror. Always know what the prosecutor's going to pull out. Never call a bad witness. Then I went and ruined everything. Did he do it? I knew it was the wrong question the moment it left my mouth, but I couldn't pull it back. It is certain. Oh, damn it. But like I was staring at a car crash, I couldn't stop, couldn't look away. I dug through years of cases, cases in which I felt certain I'd done the right thing. I asked and asked, and it answered. Even if I approached two answers in three, hell, nine in ten, it was the curveball answers that hit me like food poisoning in my gut, twisting my insides with a cocktail of guilt, shame, anger. All the time I neglected my family, like right then, and still I'd been wrong so many times. At what cost? I heard my wife and daughter laughing downstairs, and I was back in Henna Fetzel's bedroom, curled up with something as unavoidable as it was unwise. Only now I wasn't looking forward. I was peering back into the abyss, and it stared back into me. Sam. Sweet Sam. Best thing to ever happen to me. To my marriage. Has Sam ever stolen from me? Yes. Has she ever needed me? Really needed me and I was gone? It is certain. Does she even like me anymore? Outlook, not so good. I thought of Kelly, who I loved from our first date back in freshman year, who'd sacrificed so much to put me through law school, who'd bitten her tongue when I knew she had something nasty to say. Has, has my wife ever cheated on me? Yes, definitely. I almost hurled the sphere into the wall at that, the burst of anger like the crack of a whip. But then after, like that whip, I fell loose as spent leather. A spontaneous invertebrate, barely able to make it back into my still-spinning chair. Does she still love me? Very doubtful. My whole life imploded by the truth. Truths I'd have been better off not knowing. Am I 
a good person? Better not tell you now. So there you go. You wanted to know about the eight ball. That's the story. I quit the firm. I'm a consultant now for an appellate court practicing intellectual property law. Nice and boring, just so I won't use it. Divorced? The only good thing? This all made me realize I wasn't the dad I thought I was. I'm changing that now. And I can tell you about the ball, sure, but you won't get my name. I got here by Uber using a fake account, so good luck there. No, the eight ball's too dangerous. I've learned to resist it, for the most part. Sure, I thought of destroying it, but I don't think that'd work. What if its power just magically zipped into another eight ball? It needs security. Giving it up would be like handing over nuke launch codes. Even if you don't want that kind of power, it's your responsibility to contain it if you're able. I used to wonder why Henna ever got rid of it. She was popular, active, happy, near as I remembered. Got into an Ivy League school, almost a full ride. Maybe she'd had enough of her toy profit. Only asked it the things she should know, what moved her forward. Maybe she'd avoided my mistakes. Wishful thinking. I looked her up on social media a few months back. I had to know. She's got a page, all right. Pictures of college and travel. Kids. It's a memorial page. Her mom keeps it up. I scrolled through the images. All of them. Looking for the eight ball in the background like it was some smoking gun. Silly but I could still see what nobody else could. They hadn't had the ball. There were selfies on mountaintops, pics with friends all dressed up at Halloween, handsome husband laying one on her on New Year's, those inevitable parenting pics where the spouse catches baby and mom napping together in the middle of the day. But behind all that, I detected corrosion. How great was her marriage when she could unveil every negative thought he ever had of her? How sweet was parenthood when just a few questions would show her just how selfish and flippant kids could be? How meaningful was her career when she had every right answer, every moment? No curiosity, no drive, no mistakes, no growth. Henna ate a bottle of pills on her 30th birthday. I don't know what she asked the eight ball that day, but I have no doubt in my mind that one of those twenty answers ended her life. Am I going to let that happen again? Like the ball says, don't count on it. <laughs>